What's up guys, welcome back to Bird Dog Gaming. I got a brand new mic stand and a bunch of accessories so you know everything I'm saying now is legit. Over the last year I've done a ridiculous amount of research on Game Boy Advance and I'm still finding new variants for the console. This handheld is a blast to collect for and I'm now at over 100 titles complete in box. It sounds like a lot but in reality there are nearly 1000 in the full set. I don't think anyone has a definitive number especially considering we just found a new game last year but I have 991 in my list. With all that research I've been doing I've managed to find a lot of the uncommon and hard to find games on the platform and I thought it might be fun to make a video about five games on the platform that you can still find cheap at your local game stores or on eBay or anything like that. So here are the ground rules for the video. I'm going to be talking just about North American titles exclusively in this video. I'm pretty much just talking about Game Boy Advance games complete in box for this list not necessarily loose. And lastly, I'm only talking about games that I already have because I don't want to make more competition for myself. So with that out of the way, let's get started on the first game. Based on the 2003 Marvel film with Ben Affleck, developed by Gryptonite Games and published by Encore, Daredevil was... not good. Daredevil is your basic beat-em-up, like, as basic as it gets. The combat was pretty weak. You can use Daredevil's senses, but not in a way that makes the game any better. If you read the comics, you'll enjoy seeing characters that weren't in the film like Stick and Echo, but uh, that's about as positive as I can get with this game. It was not my favorite. There was a PS2 version of the game to be released by Encore, but it never saw the light of day. I highly recommend you watch the Did You Know Gaming video covering the cancellation of this release because it's pretty interesting stuff. But you want to hear about the collectability, right? Well, in the last three months, one complete in box sold for $25, one sealed sold for $50, and one is currently listed sealed for $300. I got my copy on eBay. It was $100 when the seller had it listed. It was complete in box, really great condition, and I had added it to my watch list, and I got a 60% discount. So I ended up paying about $40 shipped on this item, which I could not believe. I've never seen a seller give me a 60% discount on an item. But if you learn anything from this video, it is to add things to your watch list if you think you might want them. Why do I say that you could find this game cheap? Well, it's just another movie tie-in game. A lot of stores and eBay sellers could totally see this as just another common licensed game if they don't do their research. Think of Fantastic Four or X-Men. They're Marvel movie tie-in games that came out around the same time and have very low demand right now. A minimum wage employee at your local game store could totally see this game and throw a $5.99 sticker on it because they just assume it's a typical common movie game. In fact, finding the cartridge loose isn't really a challenge, and it's not that expensive either. But if you want to get that complete inbox Nintendo cardboard, you're going to have to go in and put some effort at your local game store, maybe add it as a save search on eBay, do what you got to do, but you can find it. And I think you can find it cheap. And speaking of Daredevil, I would absolutely love it if we got a Daredevil game in 2021. That would be freaking awesome. Next up is XS Moto, an extremely common game on the original PlayStation. It was published by XS, and the PlayStation version was developed by Interactive Entertainment, and the Game Boy Advance release was developed by DC Studios. There's very little information about this port of the game online. Heck, I had to go in and make the Moby Games page myself, still waiting on that to be published. Now, the game is exactly what it looks like, motorcycle racing. 3D graphics are actually pretty good, the soundtrack isn't bad, apparently it only has 4 tracks and 4 racers so it gets old quickly, at least that's what Andrew Florence said back in 2004. Just the cart, it's pretty uncommon, but it's dirt cheap. There are 7 loose on eBay right now, each under $9. Complete in box on the other hand, very hard to find. I found mine last March when I was driving through Utah. I stopped at a game store and they sold it to me for $12. Now let me put it this way, that game probably sat there for months because no one knew it was rare. Games like this are easily overlooked, I mean look at this cover. If you're out game hunting, I highly recommend that you do your research and know which sports titles are worth buying. They're not all dirt cheap and they're not all common. Ah, Dragon Tales, what a throwback. This cartoon started in 1999 and finished in 2005. Basically a couple of kids who traveled to a magical fairy tale land with a bunch of dragons and yeah you don't care. Developed by Handheld Games LLC, very original name, and published by New Kid Co. This game was a, a 2D platformer of course, it's a collect-a-thon type of game. I haven't played it myself but here's how Amazon describes it. 14 fun and colorful environments to play in. Play as Ord, Cassie, Emmy, or Max. 5 adventurous stories based on your favorite Dragon Tales episodes. 13 colorful envi- wait a minute. 
Are there 14 or 13 colorful environments? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's 14 colorful and fun levels, but only 13 colorful levels. Gotcha. That one last one is just not fun. This game is also on Game Boy Color, but apparently the Game Boy Advance version has a tutorial section. So if you're on Game Boy Color, you're just expected to know how to play this game. It also has Zack and Wheezy as a playable character. That's the two-headed dragon and it has improved graphics. As far as the collectability goes, people see this as a licensed game, just like Daredevil, but they also see this as a children's game, which equals worthless. Now I know we're not talking about Game Boy Color, but just to use it as a reference, there are a couple of sellers on eBay who have dozens of dozens of available copies. It's brand new old stock stuff. Uh, I could totally see Deal Tavern finding some new old stock of the GBA version someday, so for now this game is pretty hard to find complete in box, but it might not always be that way. Uh, there are none on eBay currently, none sold in the last three months. So go find this one complete in box for cheap at your local game store before they watch this video. Retro Buy and Sell sold me mine on Instagram for a measly $25 and a lot of other games, which was pretty awesome. And speaking of Retro Buy and Sell, he's the one who told me about this next game on the list. All-Star Baseball 2003 featuring Derek Jeter. Yes, like I said, Retro Buy and Sell is the one who informed me about the rarity of this one. It was developed by Software Creations and published by Acclaim. It's your typical baseball game, graphics seem good to me, gameplay looks fine, it's baseball, what do you want? Fun fact though, on opening day of the 2003 MLB season, Derek Jeter collided with Ken Huckabee at third base, which gave Jeter a separated shoulder and put him out of commission. This game actually released in 2002, so I'm sure sales weren't hindered much. Wait a minute. But let's talk collectability. Loose carts run rampant on eBay and other sites. You can find this game super easily if you want it just loose. But why would you? Complete in box does not come up often. There are zero sold on eBay in the last three months and zero currently listed. I was able to get mine on Mercari. I saw it in a lot, asked the lady if she would sell it to me individually, got it for about 20 bucks. But I wouldn't have known about it if it weren't for retro buy and sell, so I highly recommend you follow him on Instagram. He's got all the good information on rare Game Boy variants. This is one to keep an eye out for for sure. I could see it going for five, maybe ten dollars at your local game store complete in box. Like I said, it's a sports title, it's a baseball game. Everyone sees this and they think it's dirt cheap, it's common, no one cares about it. Check offer up, Facebook Marketplace, look everywhere for this game. It's gonna be a pretty hard game to find in the coming years. And the last game on the list, Colin McRae Rally 2.0. The PlayStation release was developed and published by Codemasters. However, the Game Boy Advance port was developed by Spellbound and published by Ubisoft. Colin McRae is known for having amazing 3D graphics for the Game Boy Advance. The environment and damage will actually appear on the car, which is super cool. Tons of customization options, racing mode and rally mode, multiplayer with just one cartridge. This game had it all. The Colin McRae series would later become Dirt, which is a very popular rally game. I'm pretty sure Dirt 5 just came out on the PS5 and Xbox Series X. So people are always curious as to what makes a game rare. I know I definitely am. Oftentimes we have no idea. When I was working on notes for this video though, I came across this picture that shows just why Colin McRae might be such a rare title. This sticker reads, exclusive distribution only for Latin America. Canada and Mexico exclusive games are definitely a thing, so this would not surprise me. But as far as I'm concerned, it still counts towards the North American full set if you are a set collector. On top of being a Latin American exclusive, it probably didn't have a huge print run. You can't really find this game very easily. There is one on eBay right now for $60 and it's cart only. Look at your local game stores, half price books, try to buy it in a lot. Now this game is pretty common in PAL regions, I think. So when I say it was only released in Latin America, I'm just talking about like the North American continent exclusivity. Yeah, you got what I mean. Super Awad Arcade on Instagram was the reason I was able to find my copy. It was $25 at his local Second and Charles. Now I am living proof that this extremely rare game can be bought for cheap because people think it's just another random racing game. No Mario on the cover? Worthless. I imagine the people at Second and Charles saw this game looked on eBay to find a price and couldn't find it. I have no idea. But I'm willing to bet that this game sat in the store for months because no one knew what it was. So yeah, that's five rare games that you can still find cheap on places like eBay, OfferUp, your local game store, things like that. Regarding OfferUp though, I don't usually find a lot of local listings for Game Boy Cardboard in general. If you're out game hunting and you come across a game that you've just never heard of, I would strongly urge you to look it up on eBay, check the sold listings, see if anybody's even heard of this game before. Chances are they have and there's probably a lot on eBay, but once in a while you'll find a game that has only 
sold once in the last three months and there's currently one on eBay so it might be worth picking up but hey if you guys like this type of video please let me know in the comments and I will do more videos like this we can talk about more Game Boy Advance or we can talk about other consoles just let me know what you like to see but other than that make sure you like comment subscribe all that great stuff thank you for staying to the end of the video you guys are amazing and I'll see you next time on Bird Dog Gaming